Well, it has certainly been a while since my last video, and what can I say? Life gets in the way. A couple of videos slash months ago, I showed how to install Qtile on Debian. And since I enjoyed it, I wanted to revisit Qtile and show what I had done with it. So, without further ado, to the virtual machine. Now, this is a VM I made for Qtile. This is actually running Debian Bullseye. And I showed how to install Debian Bullseye ahead of the official release in my last video. If you missed it, I'll leave a card up top. So anyway, I scoured the internet, looking on r slash Unix porn and GitHub and GitLab, just looking for some inspiration. And I found it in multiple places. But in my search, I noticed that most every rice that I saw for Qtile, there were these huge bars across the top or across the bottom. And almost every single one of them had the Chevron power line separators. And while I really like the power line look, I mean, it's even part of my intro, I wanted to do something different for my Qtile rice, but still feel pretty familiar to me. So let's take a look at the config file. So let's see it in the dot config, Qtile, and then vim config.py. So up here in the import section, I actually stole this from DT's config. So thank you, DT. And here, in the, in the top part, I declare my auto start file. And my auto start file is pretty much just an executable that looks exactly like my, my XNet RC. Here's where I declare my mod key. So mod equals mod four or the super key. Mod one equals mod one or the alt key. Mod two is control. Mod three is shift. Now I haven't done anything with the mod two and mod three, but I've got some ideas. And I have my terminal declared as ST. And coming on down the list here, or coming on down the file, you see I have my key binding set. This is mainly just, uh, it's mainly just window management stuff. So if you want to change focus, move stuff up and down. If you want to grow or shrink your windows, toggle floating, um, mod return launches the terminal. Mod tab will actually switch between the layout. So if I actually just spawn a couple of terminals here, I can do uh, mod tab. You can see I go from Monad tall to Monad wide, BSP, and Max. And see, I don't, I could have had a lot more, but honestly, th that's plenty. Here I have Mod X set to kill the focus window, and I have Mod Shift C set to kill the focus window. I generally only use Mod X because I'm just entrenched in the Spectre WM way of things because I've been using it for so long. <laughs> uh, mod Q is to restart Q tile because once again, I'm entrenched in the Spectre WM way of things. Now here is just some rudimentary programs and stuff that I've got set to key bindings. So mod P is gonna launch D menu. Uh, mod W is gonna launch Firefox. And mod F will launch PC Man FM. Here's my audio controls. So I have scripts written for hush, quieter, and louder. And what that's going to do is up everything by 5%. So if I hit my volume up, it's going to run the louder script, and it's going to change the audio volume by 5%. Now here, I have Mod Shift Q set to shut down Qtile or to go back to the TTY or go back to the login manager, whatever. Mod R is just your regular prompt. Now here is where I have the alt bindings. You know, alt B is my wallpaper script. So if you'd like to see that wallpaper changer script, I'll leave a link up top as well. I'll leave a card up top. Alt F launches VIFM. Alt V launches Pulse Mixer. And if you haven't tried Pulse Mixer, absolutely try that. It's a terminal-based Pulse Audio Mixer. It is fantastic, and I cannot recommend it enough. It's great. LD seal, seal of approval. <laughs> like I'm some kind of authority on something. That's funny. So Alt-W launches Brave, and Alt-E will launch Genie. So let's say if I want to do Alt-F, there's, v, there's VIFM. Alt-V will give me Pulse Mixer. Now moving on down the list, here is where I have my workspaces or my groups. And I gave them labels so I can have icons in the bar. 
And down here, you can actually set things to spawn. So I thought it would be kind of cool to have Firefox spawn on that on that certain workspace every time I logged in. It got to be kind of annoying because I don't always do that. And it automatically switched to it. And I got annoyed with it. So I commented that out. But I did leave it here to remind me that I can do that. Now here in the layout section, I just have all of my layouts listed and with the parameters that I wanted them to have. And here is where I declared all my colors, mainly because I'm lazy. And I can just declare the colors once and then call whatever color number it is in the rest of the file. And then if I wanted to change the color scheme, I change it in one place. Good stuff. Now, pretty much the rest of the config file is pretty much all the bar and it's a lot it took it took me a while to get to get the look that i wanted and it's a long long bar script <laughs> so i'm not gonna i'm not going to go through all of it because honestly that's pretty dry and it and it and it repeats itself a lot but over here in the screen section you see i have a separator widget i have a text box widget and the text right here I'm using the, the Inconsolata for Powerline font, and this is my text here. This is actually what gives me the effect up here that I'm looking for. Then the next one is the group box. I'm using the Ubuntu Nerd font, font size 16. I'm declaring my margins, border widths, active colors, inactive colors, you know, whether it's rounded or not, you know, that kind of stuff. Then I have the prompt widget. And also down here, you see i'm using the same thing here in this part but i'm declaring different colors to get the effect that i want so if you see so you're going to see this a good bit in the config file so then i'm going to have window name with the background color the same as the as the foreground color in this one and then here the background color for four is going to be here and the foreground color zero that's right here so if you see all the rest of this you'll see that the you'll see you'll see color zero color zero and then color seven color seven that way i could achieve the look that i was going for throughout the rest of it i have a widget for the current layout i have a widget for widget df which is pretty much this right here and you see i have some mouse callbacks here so if you see the mouse callbacks, so let's say for the volume right here, if I left click on the volume, it'll just toggle it to mute. And actually will show me that it's muted here. And I can left click on it again to get it back. But I can right click on it and launch Pulse Mixer. Once again, cannot recommend Pulse Mixer enough. Fantastic. So up here I have my calendar widget or my calendar icon and my clock widget. And that's really close to it. And right here at the very end, you see I can set my opacity, I can set my background color. And here in this 24, that's actually the size of the bar. So if I change this, so let's say, let's make it, I don't know, something gaudy. How about 40? Let's write that. And you see the bar is huge now. Honestly, I don't care for the bar being that big, but that's why I've just kind of settled on 24. It's big enough, but it's not just out there and in your face. I think that's much better. And that's pretty much the rest of the config right there, because actually I didn't change anything at all past this point right here. So if you'd like to peruse this config file, I'm going to leave a link in, down in the video description to my GitHub page. It'll be in my personal dot files in the config folder, and there's a Qtile folder inside that. So that's about all I've got for today. I really just wanted to show off the rice that I come up with in Qtile. Hopefully someone will find it useful or at least give them an idea or two to use in their config. But with all that said, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about some of the feedback from the Qtile install video that I got. It was mostly good. You know, advice was given, questions were asked, but the most troubling comment that I got was from a fellow member 
of the Linux YouTube community. You know who you are, <coughs> Mio. <coughs> this ne'er do well scoundrel just accused me of cheating on Spectre WM. The audacity. And while I do love Spectre WM, I also kind of have a wandering eye. So that accusation was pretty fair. <laughs> So anyway, thank you all for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Like, share, and subscribe.